If a loved one stopped breathing and needed immediate medical attention, would you know what to do? I'm Lee Zurich. And I'm Tisha Powell. It's a scenario that happens more often than you might think. According to the CDC, more than 350,000 cardiac arrests happen outside the hospital every year in the U.S., and about 9 in 10 of those cases turn deadly. But when CPR is administered right away, experts say lives are saved. Reporter Heather Graff explains the push to arm more people with that critical skill. And why some believe starting young with mandatory CPR training in schools is the solution. Angelia Bryant is a teen of many talents playing the piano on some days and basketball on others. I want to play basketball in college. But it's this use of her hands that might be the most impressive. My fingers are interlocked here. Angelia learned hands-only CPR or cardiopulmonary resuscitation during her freshman and sophomore years at Colonial Forge High School in Stafford, Virginia. I took it serious because I was like, I know it's something I need to learn, but I never thought that I was like, actually ever going to use it. So just how soon did you have to put those skills to use? The next year. So like the next semester, I was like, it, it happened. It was September of 2022 when Angelia's grandmother suffered a medical emergency, an apparent seizure at home. Everybody's just standing there like my dad. He ran over to her and he had his phone in his hand, but like he couldn't do anything like he was like shaking. I went to try to pick her up because I was going to try to put her in the car and she was limp. And I'm like, okay. I was like, Angelia, bring the car closer to the house. She was like, mm-mm, I'm gonna call 911. So she calls 911. At that point, Keenan Bryan says his mother was unresponsive and dispatchers instructed them to start performing CPR. My dad was in the military, so, but he was in the military like 20 years ago. So he had the 20 years ago CPR training. And I was looking at it and I was, my mind was going back to what I was learning in school, and I was like, that's not what that looked like. Angelia brought to my attention that some of the procedures I was using were a little, little outdated, and she said, no, Dad, we do it like this now. And I'm like, okay, tracking, got it. According to the American Heart Association, CPR can double or triple a person's chance of survival. And when you look at cardiac arrests that happen outside a hospital, AHA data shows more than 73% take place at home. 16% in public settings, and about 10% in nursing homes. Yet bystander CPR is administered in less than half of those cases. It's a, a skill that we all should have. And that's why the Heart Association believes every young person in this country should be taught CPR in high school. And by having it be part of the curriculum and part of the requirements, in a school environment it really assures that at any point if any of us suffer sudden cardiac arrest, there'll be somebody in our community, somebody around us that will have had CPR training. And do you believe it would save lives? I know that it'll save lives. Jill Birnbaum is the Heart Association's Senior Vice President for Field Advocacy and says her team is trying to get all 50 states to pass legislation that would make CPR training a graduation requirement for students. The organization, noting Alabama, was the first to pass such a law back in 1984 followed by Iowa in 2008, with many others then following suit over the next decade, and Florida among the most recent to do so in 2021. But the AHA says there are 10 states, seen here in white, that still don't require CPR training in schools for all students. In the states that remain, in some cases there are some legal barriers that just make it more difficult for it to um, determine the appropriate role of the state government in mandating something that happens locally. She says they'll continue pushing to close the gaps and thinks the access to AEDs Act, recently introduced in Congress, could help. Because while not a mandate, it would provide grant money to establish AED and CPR programs in public schools. Make sure your arms stay locked and you have to put like a lot of force. The training already required for high schoolers in Virginia, where Angelia lives. I'm glad that I learned it. And she says her family is proof it can make a difference. Whew. It was scary. Because this is Angelia's grandmother. But I'm glad they were here. Fully recovered thanks to her loved one's quick thinking. Especially Angelia. 
a very smart little girl. <laughs> Young lady, I should say. Grandma Charlesy still grateful. All the schools should do that. And at Colonial Forge High School. We do ninth and 10th graders. Got it. Every year. Angelia's CPR instructor is still in awe of her student. She saved her grandma and she was able to, to teach her family how to respond. What did that mean to you as the CPR instructor? That it's working. The training is working. A teen of many talents life-saving power in her hands. If it's not a requirement, I don't know. My grandma might not be here. Even if you live in one of the states where CPR courses are not required in schools, the American Heart Association says parents can still ask school leaders to offer optional training for students. The AHA also has training resources online, including a 60-second video that teaches hands-only CPR. And put your other hand on top of the first. Just go to heart.org nation.